Welcome to Exploring the Gospels. In today's message, The Surprise, Dr. McLuhan shares the story of how a young man from Yemen became a follower of Jesus through the Gospel of Matthew. When Matthew wrote his Gospel, he could never have imagined hearing about the story that I'm going to share with you today. John was born into a traditional Muslim family in Yemen. As soon as he was old enough to go to school, his Quranic studies began. Like all boys of his age, he was expected to memorize the Quran, pray five times a day, and go to the mosque every Friday, if not more. John knew that one day his parents would arrange a marriage for him. That day came much sooner than he expected. When he turned 13, he was engaged to his first cousin, who was five years older than he was. She was 18 at the time. As soon as John completed his high school education, they were married. In time, they had two daughters, and their family continued on. During those days, he moved from high school on into university, and as his university studies progressed, John began to have questions about Islam. Of course, he did not dare share any of his doubts with any of his friends, and yet they kept growing within him. One day, John's dad surprised his mother with a trip to Mecca for the holy pilgrimage. That meant the whole family would go in the East. When you do something, everybody goes. It's always a family gathering and outing. John was delighted because he thought for sure his questions about Islam would be answered when he came to Mecca. So John traveled with great expectation, but he soon discovered that Mecca was not what he hoped that it would be. As he walked around the great Kaaba stone and in that big circle, thousands of people, he did not feel any closer to the presence of God. And in his own words, this is what John said, I left Mecca without feeling that there is a creator, and if there is a creator, this is not from him, this is man-made. What a shocking statement. He decided he could no longer follow Islam, and yet he knew he could not tell anyone about his decision. He knew he would be rejected by his family and certainly face the death penalty in the country where he lived. Uh, so John uh, described those days as some of the most difficult days of his life. He did all the things that were expected of him to do, and yet none of those things brought him any nearer to God. After three years, John felt like he just couldn't continue any longer. It was just too difficult for him. He managed to get a flight from, from Yemen to Iran, and then from Iran, he escaped to Turkey. In Turkey, he found a way to join a refugee caravan and get on a small boat and head for the a tiny island of Greece. And so it was, he set out to sea in this tiny boat and arrived there at Samothrace. This is a very common passage for people to take. Pastor Margaret and I have ministered to many Iranians in Athens who did exactly that journey as I have described it to you. And after finally making it to Greece, he became with friends with a man from Syria. Of course, they both spoke Arabic, even though there was a dialect difference. They could switch to classical Arabic. He noticed that his friend had a tattoo on the inside of his arm. It was a cross. It is common for parents in places like that in Eastern cultures, to, uh, especially in the Coptic or the Syrian Orthodox Church, to tattoo a cross on the arm of the right hand of their children when they are very young. And so John asked him what it meant. His friend said it represents the cross of Jesus. And he asked him if he'd like to know more about Jesus. 
right away, John said yes. So he invited John to the service that uh, coming week, that weekend in Greece. The moment John entered the church, he felt something different. He felt something he had never felt before. He saw men and women filled with joy, worshiping God. Although it seemed strange to him, dancing and clapping and just carrying on and enjoying God's presence, his immediate experience was, I want that. I want what they have. He said to himself these words, there must be some secret power in that place. <laughs> we know that power, of course, to be the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, I've worshipped in many churches like that across Europe and Turkey. When people find Jesus and are filled with the Holy Spirit, worship is explosive. What a powerful atmosphere to be in. I love going in places like that. There are no limits to anything, and we just enjoy the presence of God. After the service, the pastor greeted John warmly and gave him a New Testament in Arabic. He had never seen a New Testament, never touched a New Testament, had no idea the content of what was in a New Testament. That night, John began reading the book of Matthew for the first time. He could not put it down. Chapter 1, <laughs> chapter 2, all the stories of Jesus. Chapter 3, the baptism, and 4, the temptations, and then the Sermon on the Mount. And the Sermon on the Mount just gripped his heart as he read every word. What a beautiful thing. Love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. What kind of thinking is that? Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Do not be anxious for tomorrow. What kind of teaching? What kind of liberation is that? He read Matthew from beginning to end. He wanted more. John felt so inspired to read more and more of the teachings of Jesus. Well, the pastor gave him a complete copy of the Bible. He read the Bible from cover to cover. And in his own words, this is what John said. The Bible answered all of my questions about prayer and fasting and identity this is such an important understanding. We have an identity that's rooted in the fact that we have a God who loves us. This is the God I want to follow. This is the one I want to give my life for, John wrote. Yes, something started to change in my heart, he wrote. It was the most beautiful teaching I ever heard. Now, for those of us who've been in church all of our life, isn't that a breath of fresh air? Yeah to hear an outsider just say what reading the words of the Bible and the powerful impact that they had on his life. One year later, John was baptized. And as a follower of Jesus, uh, John began to search social media to find other Yemeni people who may be following Jesus. He discovered there are not many Yemeni believers speaking about Jesus on social media, one can understand why, especially in country. And God put a passion in his heart to begin to share messages with his fellow countrymen in his Yemeni dialect. Today, John lives in another European country and regularly broadcasts positive messages about Jesus in Yemeni Arabic. Well, I'm sure you could know it didn't take long for his family to discover his YouTube channel and his videos. They were certainly upset about their son and rejected him. Of course, if they didn't, the family themselves would have been killed. So that's a very difficult thing to experience. So John can't go back to Yemen. He can't see his family or his wife and children, but he hopes that one day they'll become followers of Jesus and they will be all reunited in the grace and will of God. But that's not the end of the story. About three years ago, a young man from Yemen wrote to me after listening to one of our messages. For many days, we me messaged intensely back and forth. He goes by the name of David. I'll call him that. And it was during those days, I learned how to respond to people who say, God can't have a son. People say that to me all the time. 
I said to David, you cannot understand who Jesus is with human thinking. It's going to take more than that. Only the Spirit of God is able to reveal that to you. I can answer your question, but I can't give you understanding into the question that uh, the answer I'm about to give you. And so I encourage you, David, to just ask God to show you who Jesus is. What is his identity? And so the Spirit of God answered David's questions and revealed to him the true identity of Jesus. One day I asked David, would you like to be baptized? He said, oh, I'd love to be baptized. Of course, he'd read about the baptism of Jesus. He knew we were to make disciples and to go into all the world and baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. He said, well, how can I do that? How, how can it be possible? So I said to David, well, how far do you live from the Sea of Aden? He said, oh, my house is not that far from the sea. So I said to him, tonight as the sun sets, just go down to the beach and wade out into the water and just completely immerse yourself under the water, come back up out of the water, go back up on the beach and call me on your cell phone. Tell me what you experienced. And so John baptized himself, isn't that beautiful? In his own country with no other believers around, no nobody else there to witness what he did except the angels in heaven and the Spirit of God himself. John was thrilled. Afterwards, this is what he confided in me. I've always been afraid to go to the sea. I don't go to the sea. But when I went in last night, especially at night, he said, I felt no fear, and the presence of God was with me. So since then, David has been sending me pictures of young men who have decided to follow Jesus. <laughs> they too want to be baptized. And so now uh, they're not uh, at the coast, they're inland in some of the interior desert regions of Yemen. They just take a bottle of drinking water and just pour it over a person's head. What a beautiful sign. Amen. I've had seen recorded videos of men making their testimony in Arabic, coming to Jesus and placing their faith in him. So David still writes to me regularly. We've written several times this week. After I discovered the story of John, I immediately thought of David. I said, David's got to know about John. I sent him one of John's YouTube messages for him to listen to. David wrote back, my dear father, <laughs> isn't that sweet? John is a powerful young man, and I listen to him all of the time. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. So both David and John are under threat from their families. Both of them love the Gospel of Matthew, and they're holding tightly to the words of Jesus. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his soul? And what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Matthew chapter 16 and verse 26. And when John was younger, his identity was in the cultural traditions of the Yemeni culture, the clothing, and especially the expensive golden daggers that the men wear. These golden daggers and the social jewelry, associated jewelry cost anywhere between 10 and 10,000 and 50,000 dollars. That scripture comes to life when you say, what will a man give in exchange for his soul? John's new identity is knowing who Jesus is, and Jesus knowing who he, who he is, and living in a close relationship with him. John said, I belong to the king of heaven. I know that even if I die today or tomorrow, I know where I am going. It can kill my body, but I will have eternal life. Isn't that beautiful? John and David live by these words. They're inviting you to live by these words as well. If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Matthew chapter 16, verse 24 through 25. Now both John and David have friends who have been martyred for Christ. And while they grieve the loss of their friends, they know that they will see them 
in heaven again. John invites you to read Matthew for yourself and come to the same conclusions that he has come to. Only Jesus can forgive sins. Only Jesus can promise you a place in heaven. John invites us to say us today to receive Jesus as our Savior. And though John traveled three months, uh, three countries, uh, longer than three months, across three countries, in search for the truth, God used the tattoo of a cross on the arm of a Syrian believer to touch his heart. John uh, invites you today to follow Jesus. And John wants you to share your faith. You never know who's open to hearing about Jesus until you boldly ask the question, would you like to know more about Jesus? May God give you courage to share your faith with people that you meet. This is exactly what Jesus meant when he said, go and make disciples of all the nations. A clearer translation of that word go would be to say, as you are going, it's not about the destination, it's about the journey and, and the encounter that we have with people every day of our lives. We have opportunities to touch people. Last week, uh, someone gave their heart to Jesus from our team who was out in the streets of Norfolk talking to people about faith. And someone opened their heart to follow Jesus. It's a beautiful moment when people give their heart to Jesus and receive him as their savior. Today's story reminds us of the power of the Gospels, especially the Gospel of Matthew. Always be ready to give away a copy of the Gospel of Matthew. Every day people ask me online for a copy of the Bible. I send them a link uh, to this website, www.bible.is. Bible it's such an easy site to read, to reach. And you can download the Bible there in 1,600 languages. Aren't you so glad? There's no other book in the world that's been translated into 1,600 languages. It's just a remarkable book. Matthew is a remarkable statement. As soon as I send people a link to the Bible, I immediately follow up that link with these words from the Gospel of Matthew. Come to me. All who are weary and heavy laden, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly of heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 through 30. If those words warm your heart, just hearing them, something inside of you says, yes, I have a burden I'd like to have off of my shoulders. That means the Spirit of God is drawing you to give him your burdens that he wants to carry for you. If you do not have a copy of Matthew's Gospel, write to me, and I'll send you a, dig a digital copy of this amazing eyewitness account of the life of Jesus. I pray that this testimony, John's testimony, will encourage you to believe that you can have a relationship with God. All of the Gospels tell the good news that God wants you to have a relationship with him through Jesus Christ. Ask God to open your eyes to see who Jesus is, just like he opened the eyes of John and David. First, Jesus asked the question, who do people say that I am? Of course, that wasn't the question that Jesus was really interested in, and people gave one answer and another, but it always comes down to the personal experience. He personalized it by asking, who do you say that I am? What an important question. Jesus wants you to have a personal encounter with him. I believe there are people listening to this message who are ready to have a personal encounter with Jesus. If that's you, say with me, thank you, Jesus, for dying for me on the cross to pay for my sins and for inviting me to have a close relationship with you. If you just prayed with me to accept Jesus as your Savior or were healed while listening to this message, write to me and we'll share more information with you about what it means to follow Jesus. Father, thank you for reaching across all boundaries with the good news. Help us to be ready to share our own testimony of your salvation in our lives. 
In Jesus' name, amen. We hope this message has filled you with living hope in Jesus. If you would like to talk to someone about your spiritual journey, please leave a comment or send us a private message. We enjoy reading your notes and having an opportunity to pray with you. If you received a blessing through this message, please share it with others. We invite you to become a Living Hope Partner by donating as little as a dollar a month through our QR code. Your gifts will help us create new messages and reach more people. Living Hope is a ministry of Ingleside International Incorporated. All donations for Living Hope qualify as a charitable contribution. Thank you for your prayers and support. Next week, we will continue learning together from the Word of God. God bless you and fill you with living hope.